Sean plays pool and has travelled the world. Cage is passionate about football. And Eleanor dreams of one day becoming a drama teacher. Personalised learning, at the heart of current educational thinking, is essentially about tapping into what makes each and every student tick. It's knowing your students and it's trying to know as much about the students as you can. As a head of learning or an assistant head teacher or a head teacher, I think it's important that when you walk outside and you have an individual conversation with the student that you try to remember every single thing that they tell you. Um, so the next time you talk to them, you've actually got something tangible and it's actually making a link with that student. Winchmore School is a large comprehensive in North London. The school has put in place a series of strategies aimed at ensuring all its Year 10 and 11 students have the best possible chance of fulfilling their potential. At GCSE, personalised learning starts off with three different curriculum pathways. We have an academic pathway, vocational and a work-related pathway. But in addition to the curriculum, it's about making sure that there is a raft of support strategies in place for students. It's about providing a package um, that together meets the needs of the students over and above what goes on in the classroom. Liam, do you understand what's happening? Of course, personalised learning isn't new. What is new is the drive to make the best practices universal across all schools. And nine is 2.73. Research has shown parents want personalised learning, learning which meets the unique needs of their children. They also want to be kept informed about what's going on at their child's school. Sometimes it's difficult to communicate with a teenager. Sometimes it's like trying to get blood out of a stone, you know, trying to just find out what he's been doing during the school day, you know. But So it's been very helpful that we get this feedback from Winchmore. Oh, nice shot. When's your homework got to be in, boy? I think it's really important that we involve parents in developing our approach to personalised learning. We need to make sure that parents are fully committed and work with us, and it's that partnership that means that parents can then support their children at home. Generally, uh, Winchmore's been pretty good at keeping us informed of Sean's progress, not just with his subjects and how he's getting on with them, but you know, with his attendance and behaviour as well. You know what you're doing? Yeah, uh, you just got to round it to the nearest 10 and then... We're certainly encouraged to give as much time as possible and to assist him you know, whenever we can. You're getting on with it, OK, you know what you're doing? Yeah. I would explain it as having a, a three-pronged um, attack on their learning, right? The student, the parent and the teacher, right? We have to work together so they can fulfil their potential. Without the parent, there's something missing in the cycle. What's that you're doing? I just want... If the parents are supporting the students at home, there's much more chance that those students are going to be A, turned on by education, and B, actually achieve their best. The Christodoulou family is a good example of how students with different needs and abilities can benefit from the school's approach to personalised learning. Gina's son and daughter are both in year 10. My situation's unusual, but I've got two children in the same academic year. One was born in September and one was born in July. Despite only being a few months apart in age, their abilities in maths are quite different. The school's attitude towards the children, they cater for their needs. They are completely different, so they guide them through, they help them. Personalised learning isn't simply a matter of the school putting Eleanor and Andreas in different math sets because one's more able than the other. Eleanor, who finds maths both dull and difficult, has been included in the school's Study Plus Maths programme, a national strategy pilot. I've always been like struggling in maths and I was scared I was going to get a bad level. You have the, questions the pilot aims to get students who've lost their way in maths back on board by making the subject more engaging and relevant to their own lives. What is it that we found about the value of the MP3 play and the money that we're going to pay for it? If it was like, a more popular make, then it was more expensive. That's right, that's what we Well, since I've been doing Study Plus, it's built up my confidence in maths. It's more exciting, so like, every time you go in, it's a different thing we're doing and not just stuck on the same maths sitting there doing the same thing every day. 
Of course, personalised learning isn't just about providing for those who are underachieving. Eleanor's brother, Andreas, is doing well in maths, and in order to meet his needs, the school's given him the chance to do an extra GCSE. Andreas is doing statistics because he's quite talented in maths. He has to do this after school on a weekly basis and will be taking a GCSE at the end of, at the, end of the year. Okay. We thought of offering them an opportunity of getting an extra GCSE just to keep them interested in maths still. And you will see that we've got to speed through this scheme of work on one lesson per week, whereas in a normal setup we'd have four lessons a week. We know that the kids have the basics already and they might become bored in normal lessons. Even though it's hard work and it's after school, it'll pay off for the future and I can use it to get into a university or something like that. In order to ensure that every student in the school achieves the highest standard they can, right across the spectrum of ability, Winchmore School places a high priority on tracking students' progress. For learning to become more personalised, I think you need to have good data, and that's a very important part of the job, is, is getting as much data as you possibly can from loads of different sources. You're going to get them from the exams, but you also need to talk to teachers as well as looking outside the school as much as possible. The more data you have, I think it's easier for the personalised learning because you know their strengths and you know their weaknesses and you know which areas to work on. Muhammad Ali. Now, when I was your age, he was my role model. Another example of the way the school works to ensure every child realises his or her full potential is the Black Pupils Achievement Project. It was set up when research revealed that boys from Caribbean backgrounds weren't doing as well as their peers. Um, basically, my name is Sharif. Um, I'm year 12 now. And I'd just like to ask you, like, um, how many GCSEs do you lot think I got? Three. Five. I actually got ten. You lot might think that I got three because of the way I dress. Maybe I got my hood up, my trousers are low. Having made it into the sixth form themselves, the these students street. are now helping There's inspire the current year tens. Um, my name's Nimrod. I've got um, eight GCSEs. I've done the mocks and I came out with no GCSEs at all. And like, we were going home on the bus and everyone was talking about how they passed this and they passed that. That hit hard to me and like, it made me realise how I need to like, really, really like, pull up my socks. Yeah, my name's Nathaniel. I've got five A's and I've got four B's. I work hard. You've got to know when to separate being street, doing stuff with your friends to when you go into class. Because you know that once you go into the classroom, you need to work. What you do, yeah? If you don't want to get influenced, like, you have to have your own mind. Make your own decisions. Well, listening to rap music, I know people say it's a bad thing. I like rap music, but that don't make me go out in the street taking a gun or shoot people. I don't do none of that, yeah? Yes. And because you're singing along to it, it doesn't mean that you have to be a gangster. The success of the Black Pupils Achievement Project has come partly through sessions like this and partly through visits to the school by inspiring, sometimes unconventional, black role models who the students remember well. This guy walks in, like <laughs> some, he's like Don King, yeah? Like, he just told us to do some stuff like running, waking up six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I think that helped me because like, running six o'clock in the morning, it just means I was awake. Like seeing people that was in, my same, in, in the same situation as me, and then they somehow turned life around, yeah? Mm. So if they can do it, what makes me think I can't do it? If I put myself in the right position to do it, I think I, I'll do it, like. Well, Black Caribbean boys has made me see what I have to do to get on with life and how, how I was and how I need to change it. I think being part of the Afro-Caribbean boys group has been fairly positive for Cage because he's had some good role models, had some of the teachers who have been from Afro-Caribbean backgrounds who have spoken to the boys about what they need to do to achieve. The students that are in year 10 at the moment, now that they've gone through some of that process, I would take some of those students and then they would act as buddies and mentors for the younger ones. All the year 10 boys and the year 7 boys are going to have a chance to speak to each other for two minutes each. And the idea behind this is that you try to get to know each other. So when I blow the whistle, you can start. What's your favourite lessons? My favourite lessons are drum and playing. How do you make your music? Fruity loops. So what do you do in your spare time? Football. Do you go to your cousins a lot? Once in a while. Who's your least favourite teacher? Since the school's been running the Black Pupils Project, black students are no longer underachieving in their SATs. Their SATs results 
were in line with the other students, where before the SATS results of Caribbean boys were lower uh, uh, than other students. We've also seen improved attitudes towards learning. We've kept some students where perhaps previously they might have been excluded. One, two, three, four. Five, Joe Bargent, who teaches seven, dance eight, and PE, one, is involved two, in the academic mentoring program, five, six, another seven, example of how the school one, targets two, individuals. Three, four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so She's volunteered to work with students whose year 10 assessments indicate they're in danger of not getting five GCSE passes. I have three boys that I mentor and I discuss their revision tactics. And I can plan my time around that without myself. Basically anything that they've got concerns about or they're worried about, they can come and talk to me and we discuss their progress. Why do you think that it's important that you do well in your mock exams? We had about 30, 40 members of staff volunteering. So we compiled a list and then we gave this list to um, the students who we felt were underachieving and we asked them to nominate who, were, who were they would like to be their mentor. Right. And so there was this kind of choice involved. If I was given a teacher that I didn't like, it would have benefited me as much because I just didn't like them. But if it's with a teacher that you do like, you get on with, you could talk to on a one-to-one -one basis on, a, on the same level. So that's good for me. Daniel, what about you? What is going to be your... They're not treating us like kids. They're, treat, they're talking to us like adults. They're not, they're gonna, if we're not going to do it, they're not going to give us detentions for it. They're going to say, if we don't do it, that's our own fault. We're going to fail our GCSEs. If we don't get our GCSEs, we don't get a job. Aaron, what's your favourite film? Um, Spider-Man 2. OK, that's a good one. What you do is you literally just change the language and then it, the whole film will be in Spanish. To me, it's important that I, I really know my students that I'm mentoring well as, as a person as well as just a student because I think it's important to understand their lifestyles and the, the things they do outside of school so that I can be able to build a trusting relationship with them. But this is a really good start because I can see that you've actually gone through the work, you have made your own notes because it's in your own words, which is really important. One of the key things we're looking for is evidence towards their targets. It's too easy to write down, say, oh, I, I'm going to revise uh, business studies or whatever, and not actually do anything about it. What we're trying to do, we're trying to make sure that target setting is not just paid lip service to, all right, and that there is a quality discussion going on. I think that if you had it shortened down into smaller versions onto cards, things like these things would really stick out for you because then you could use it as a flashcard. Last year I was clowning about a bit and this year I realised that this year is very important because for my, for my future it's going to give me more opportunities if I get higher GCSEs, so it's helped me a lot. It has had an effect on me because now I'm actually studying at home and before I wasn't doing anything, just going out playing football with my mates. It's had a really big impact on me. Last year, we ended up targeting 77 students who we felt, if we didn't intervene, would not have got five GCSEs. In fact, some of them probably wouldn't have got any. And out of those 77, 52 of them went on to get five or more GCSEs, with some of them getting seven or eight. Personalised learning requires a commitment, and it requires a commitment to every single student in the school. I think it's more than just a new initiative, it's actually philosophy of education and it's philosophy that puts each individual child at the heart of what we do.